Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I know you and I have worked together for over two years now. I was, yes, which sounds crazy. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I was just looking up your anniversary date and I think it was like July of 2018. Um, so technically I kind of know your journey and story, but I wanted to hop on here and have you retell it and dive in a little bit deeper because okay. my goal with these spotlight interviews is to share like the ups, the downs, the good times, the tough times, you know, the lessons, <laughs> and then the tips, tools, and tricks that really got you to where you're at today and how to build a thriving photography business and joining the top 1% of photographers in our industry, creating a six figure income from your passion. So I know your story is going to be inspiring and motivating for other photographers who are wanting to build a thriving photography business too. So just to kind of start, can we get a little bit of a backstory on who you are, where you're located and kind yeah, of- Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm Kristen Favel. I own Kristen Favel Boudoir Photography. We're based out of Ashland City, which no one knows where that is, um, but it's about 30 minutes um, west of Nashville. So we kind of pull where I'm located at. I kind of pull from Nashville. I also pull from Clarksville and Atlanta. Um, I kind of all the surrounding areas. So even though we're kind of tucked away, um, it's been really nice, like our location, because we can pull from those different areas and stuff. Yeah. Married, kids. Yes, of course. I am married. Uh, we just celebrated nine years, which sounds oh. absolutely crazy. Congratulations. Um, we have two kids that are with us um and we have one on the way so um, we'll see yeah we're excited um so we have two little girls um one's nine and one just turned four and our other little one will be here um april of next year so we're excited <laughs> so exciting i love it so kind of tell me when was the first time you picked up a camera was it love at first yeah. right yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> we always um, we always joke about that. I think people, when people ask me, like, how did you get in photography? They expect me to say, like, oh, my, you know, grandpa or my grandma gave me my first camera when I was three, and I just knew right away. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> not even close. Um, I, um, photography, honestly, wasn't even on my radar. It was something that I really even wanted to do. Um, my husband actually um, kind of got into it, in all honesty, because we were getting married in Costa Rica, and he wanted to be able to take some photos while we were kind of doing our thing and, you know, traveling and everything, and so he started to really get into it, and would show me a few things here and there, but I still just didn't really care. <laughs> I didn't really, it just wasn't, it wasn't at that time, wasn't a passion of mine. Um, and just didn't really, wasn't, just wasn't my thing. Um, yeah. But um, the more and more that he got into it, the more and more that I was interested into it. And um, it kind of, uh, it's so funny because I almost want to say it kind of fell in my lap, um, mm -hmm. just simply because, we, even when we first started the studio and we opened the studio, he was the photographer and I was the back end business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then it finally, we kind of reversed roles and that's when I started to just fall in love with it and couldn't imagine myself doing anything different now, which sounds completely crazy to me. Um, but yeah, it wasn't never something that I was, you know, initially thought that this was something that I would ever do. I mm -hmm. still joke about that today. If someone told me years ago that, you know, I was going to be doing photography, I would have probably laughed at you. And I've been like, yeah, right. Like, there's no way. <laughs> like, I don't even know the first thing about a camera. Um, but um, here we are today. And I honestly couldn't imagine myself. Like, if somebody told me I had to stop and do, do something else, I I don't even know what I would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I think that's great because it's so relatable to some people did. Like some people yeah. had a, a grandpa. You're exactly right. I, I do these interviews and there was someone who had a grandpa who gave them their first camera. And then right. people who maybe have a passion for it. For me personally, like I had a passion for photography, but then I kind of lost it. But then 
I think for me, it's not so much the photography, but the interaction and yes. the difference, the impact that it makes on people's lives is actually Definitely. what I'm more attracted to. Cause I'll have people ask me for recommendations on cameras and I'm like, oh. <laughs> right. I'm like I know or, my camera yes. and my settings, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, or I laugh because when people ask me that question, I'm like, I literally have a Sony, a Canon and a Nikon. So I, whatever you want, I don't, like it doesn't, it, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I just think it's funny when you, cause you do have, and not knocking anybody that's like, like, that's like, oh, this, this, and this, and this. But yeah, yeah for me, I think the part that I definitely love, I mean, I love photography and I love what it does, but it's the people, it's the, yeah. the women that I get to work with. It's mm -hmm. the watching them, you know, come in terrified and then walk out looking like they can just own the world. And I'm like, yeah. that's why I do what I do. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I think that's good for people, anybody watching to, to know that I was more kind of on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say I didn't care about the photography part, but I definitely loved the people. That's what kept me in it. And it was not yeah. necessarily being a photography geek, which there's nothing wrong with being a photography geek. But if you're not a photography geek, you can still build a thriving photography oh, business. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, definitely. Or like, I love when people ask me, you know, they're like, well, what did you, what settings? And I'm like, I'm not a technical photographer. Yeah. Like, that's mm -hmm. just not, I, I mean, yes, I know my, how my camera works, of course. Yeah. And I know how to get lighting right. I know all that stuff, but it's not what's important to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I know, I, I know, I, I know some photographers are like cringing, but I'm just like, that's just not, it's not what sets my soul on fire. Like I love photography and I would never, and I don't ever want to stop, but that's not that one. Mm -hmm. That's not the main thing that keeps me going. Kind of like you said. Yeah, I love that. So when did you guys decide to like when was the point at which you were like okay we're gonna do this as our full-time income <laughs> um that's that's a whole nother story in all of itself okay. um, it was really crazy my um my husband and i had both had really amazing great paying um government contracting jobs and mm -hmm. i we decided as a family that i was going to stop doing that so mm -hmm. that i could become a stay at home mom with our first daughter and so my husband was the one that was was the income he was the the breadwinner of the family he he was the only one bringing in money and mm -hmm. um, and it was working out well for us we were doing good we were doing fine we were we were for the most part happy. He didn't necessarily love his job, but we were doing okay. And then one day uh, without kind of really any notice, um, out of the blue, he calls me and you get that phone call where you just know something's up <laughs> as soon as you answer the phone. Yeah. And um, he just says, they sent us to corporate and he was like, they let us go. And I'm like, okay, what? <laughs> And that was six days before Christmas. And oh, they basically called in his, um, the contract job that he was on. It wasn't just him. It was other people involved as well that was on the contract. And basically told him that you're done. You're no, you don't have to go back to the office. You don't have, we'll pack your stuff up. It's not a big deal, but you're done. And that was it. So then here we are. Um, neither one of us have no job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, it was crazy. And like I said, it was six days before Christmas. We were living in Maryland at the time. And um, I was freaking out, but there's, at that point, there's not much you can do. He's definitely right. my level, <laughs> my level headed. We were coming to Tennessee to visit my family and um, that's a long drive and we had lots to talk about. <laughs> um, and basically we were just like, you know what, this, maybe it's, maybe it's a blessing. You know, you didn't necessarily love your job. We don't necessarily love living in Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, so he kind of, we both were like, we should open up a studio. And at first we were both like, Haha, yeah, right. Like, we don't know what we're doing. Like, we've never owned our own business before. Um, but we did. We came to Tennessee, told my family that we were going to move back. And that was kind of it. When we told our fam my family that it was, 
I guess part of us were kind of like, well, we have to make it happen now. Like we've done old people, you know? And so we went back to Maryland, put our house up on the market. We, that was, we came back in December. We went, you know, here for Christmas and we moved in February, um, moved back to Tennessee and February 14th opened up the studio. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, and so <laughs> I was literally about to tear up. I'm just having yeah. like goosebumps and tears because I know that people run into these things all the time, right? Yeah. These moments that are just like, feel like devastation, but yet like the most amazing things can come of them. And oh, I love, definitely. Love you guys. Yeah, and I mean, attitude. it was, yeah. And it was crazy because, you know, I, I, and I look back now and I'm like, yeah, that was madness. We literally put everything that we had mm -hmm. into one basket and we were like, it's, it, it was almost as if we were kind of like, we don't have a choice. Like this is, it's either this or, or I don't know what, because we've literally put everything into this thing. And, um, Oh, and, and it wasn't easy. I mean, there were, <laughs> there was a lot of struggle and a lot of going back and forth and a lot of like, we should just stop. Like, this isn't working. This is, we're killing ourselves. We're, you know, we're frustrated and we don't have money and mm -hmm. we don't know how we're paying for this and we don't know how we're paying for that. Um, but, you know, you just keep going and you keep going because something in your side of you is like, I can't stop. Like, I love this. So I have to make it work. And so we eventually, finally, we, I feel like we started to get better and better. I mean, years and years later, but then once we found you, I felt like that was when we finally, we can actually say we have a thriving photography studio now. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can say we're part of that now because yeah. beforehand, while, while our passion was in it, it just wasn't there was just no way we're going, we were going to actually be able to, to continue on that path. Like we were going to have to shut down, um, even though that would have killed me. Um, but there was just no way we could have done it. Yeah. What's one thing that you wish you had known when you guys opened your studio? Like looking back now, like what's one thing you wish you had known? Oh gosh, one thing? <laughs> That's so hard. I look well, back now and I'm like, oh Lord, there's so helpful. many, there's, yeah, there's so many things. I think the, I think that one of the biggest things is, is that, and we, we talk about that now, like you hear people say, um, you either, either you fail, you know, you either, you succeed fast or you fail slowly. Mm -hmm. And, um, we were in that, we were failing, but we were failing slowly. Like we were, we somehow or another always found a way to, to make it for that month. And I mean, it would be barely, <laughs> but mm -hmm. we always found that out. And I, and that for the longest time, I thought that that's just, that's just what it was going to be. Like there was, if this is what you want to do, then this is how it's going to be. You're going to be struggling forever. You're going to be working in non-stop you're you're gonna have hours and hours and hours where you're in the corner crying because you're like I can't do this but yet I have to do this right. and it doesn't have to be that way like you can find I always we we were just talking about this the other day um, my husband and I and we were joking about how people say it takes a village to raise a kid mm -hmm. and we're like it takes a village to do a to do a, a any type of business like mm -hmm. you have to have those people in your corner. I think you have to know, and I say all that to just be like, I think you have to know your weaknesses and you have to know your strengths and you can't be afraid to bring somebody else in who is good at your weakness and be like, help me. But then you have to also be willing to do the work. Like you can't just be like, here you do it. You said you were good at it. Like you still have to be able to be like, okay, they said this, this is what we're going to do. And I think that's the one thing that um, I wish we would have known beforehand too, is just like, I think part of our ego mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of gets in the way because you're like, oh, I'm going to do this. Like I can do this. Mm -hmm. And we would just go back and forth and be like, oh, they don't know what they're, they, don't, they don't know what it is. And then eventually you're like, okay, well, what you're doing isn't working. So maybe you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's just the biggest thing. I think the bit, like I said, I think the biggest thing is just that it doesn't have to be a struggle. Like you can do what you love and it actually 
bring in the income and that you need for your family. Like it's crazy to think now that this is our only source of income and this is all we do. And it, it is, it does work. <laughs> you can make it work. Yeah. I love that. And I think what's interesting, and I might ask you this too, is I think one of the biggest, um, the hardest things when people are starting and, and if I heard you correctly, kind of what you're trying to say is having a team, oh, yeah. having people that are good at your weaknesses or divvying up those things and having experts and all of those like come together is what would right. have probably propelled you guys quicker. Um, yes. <laughs> to success. But I would say probably most people's objections is going to be, yeah, but I don't have the money. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I can 100% say that I totally understand that. I yeah. mean, even when it was so funny, because even when um, I reached out to you, like through your, because you were doing like, I think like 15 minute calls or something like that on Facebook. And I reached out to you in all honesty, I was like, she's going to be way too much. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how I'm paying rent this month. Like I can't, I can't afford to pay for this. Mm -hmm. But after I got off the call with with you and we were, you know, sitting down with, with my husband and kind of looking at things and both of us were like, this is crazy. Like we're going to pay her and (laughs) we don't even like, we'll pay her, but then how are we paying rent? (laughs) Like, how are we going to do this? But at the same time, I also think that that kind of lit a fire under us too, because we were like, okay, well, if we're going to do this, then we have to, we have to go all in. Like, we can't just half ask this. We have to, if she says she needs this, then she, we need, she needs it like within two seconds. Like we have to do everything we can and we need to like, do what she needs but then also keep going with what you know we can't we can't just back off on what we're doing now like what we're doing is semi working and we can't just expect you know you guys to come in and solve all our problems (laughs) I I love that you're bringing up all of these points because I think they're so valuable it doesn't matter who you're working with a mentor you know a marketing team someone who's coming in to do your retouching or anything like that, like any kind of team member, an assistant, someone to help with your conversations, like, you know, a studio manager, any of those, um, those things in order to grow, you typically have to have capital and you, and if you don't have capital, you have to find it. Right. Yes. (laughs) And you have to be prepared to put in the time, the work. And I love how you said that basically you didn't have the money, but like by putting the money in, you're like, okay, we have to go all in. And there's a yeah. commitment there that I think is what makes it work. And the more skin you have in the game, sometimes the more commitment that you know I've seen people have. I remember too, I did an interview with Kira and when she, when we started working together, she put it all in her credit card and she's like, okay, I'm giving myself 30 days and I'm going to do every, every hour, every minute right. I'm going to dive all in and I'm going to give this my all. Mm-hmm. And she went from like, I think 8,000 the year before we started working together to 80,000 in 12 months, which is just like, what, a 900% increase in right. her income. <laughs> so just for people listening really understand that it takes money, it takes capital to build a business. And it's such a, it's such a misconception that you can just hop in and all of a sudden be making a bunch of money. Yeah. There has no. <laughs> to be an investment. Right. I think, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I feel like nobody talks about mm-hmm. is yeah, you can build a business. Like you said, failing slowly <laughs> until yeah. you get to the point of I'm either going to have to make a big investment or quit. Um, and I hate that. I hate that our industry has people that fail or quit their passion so much because they just don't understand like, Hey, if you're going to buy a franchise, you have to put in like a hundred thousand dollars before right. you even start to make profit. So really getting in that mindset, I think that's probably one of the tips that I would share. I'm taking over your interview. Um, but <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. No, I mean, it just, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. We, you know, it was so funny because even before we came, before we met up with you and and started working with you, we did, we tried a ton of other things like we, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not, I would never say I've everything that I've done, all the 
people that I've worked with, I've, I've, I've been able to take something from them and it has helped me to continue to, it helps me get from point A to point B. It was just that I was missing some of the other things that I feel like your system, I don't know, I feel like they would give you half of it, but not the full picture. And with you guys, we got, we were able to get everything <laughs> and that's why it works. <laughs> I would, but I, go, go ahead. ahead. I was no, going to fail <laughs> faster. I was going to yeah. say, probably one of the things is actually fail more, fail faster because yes. failure is actually like, I call them golden nuggets. They're going to mm -hmm. propel you to success. I think people are fearful of investing or failing. Um, and I think if you just fail more, fail faster, you'll actually yes. get a lot further because you're going to be learning. And every single person that you get, you know, you learn from or course that you take or workshop that you go to, like you said, there's always something to be taken away from. Yeah, um, definitely. For sure. Yeah. And I, th and I think that that's, that was, that's something that I'm not good at. Like, yeah. I feel like, I mean, I've definitely gotten better at it, but I know that I would always be more, I'm, when it comes to my husband and I, I'm definitely the more cautious one. Like, I'm like, um, yeah, but that's, you're talking about how much money? Like, yeah. what if it doesn't work? And he's like, yeah, but, or we can just sit around and wait for it and then just keep thinking and then later on do it. And then we still fail. He's like, at least we know it worked or it didn't work. <laughs> and so it, it is one of those things where you have to it you do uh, my husband always says he's always says you have to spend some money in order to make some money and yep. and and it's so true and mm -hmm. I think that that part it is scary like especially if you're just starting out or like I said I mean my husband and I literally have came home you know when we were struggling came home and went to go flip on the lights and the lights aren't on you know and it was because we were like I mean, granted, luckily we were able to go pay it and it was fine, yeah. but we still didn't, it was like, I was waiting for that ordering session so I could go and pay because yeah. it was like, we were, we were doing that whole mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck kind of a deal. And, um, it just, it was like, it's one of those things where looking back now, you're just like, how did we do that? But I think that it just makes where we are right now just that much more better. Like we're like, okay, yeah, we, we've seen that <laughs> and um, we don't want to go back. So it's just like, now you just keep moving forward, yeah. making things better and you know, all that stuff. But yeah, I think that it's scary, but mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that you have to do. You just have to take that little, it's just like I tell my clients all the time. I'm like, you have to take that little leap. You have to, it's scary to do a, to do a boudoir shoot. I get it. But once you take that little leap, I promise you it's the most rewarding thing you've ever done for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it goes the same. It's like, kind of like, oh yeah, you should take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's one of my favorite quotes from last year was Kyle Cease saying that your brain can, can calculate like what can go wrong based on past mm -hmm. experience of, of taking, you know, like of doing a certain action, but it can't calculate what you have to gain. It can calculate what right. you have to lose, but it cannot calculate what you have to gain. And that was one of my favorite things for sure. Yeah. So as far as like, what are the top three resources that you felt like have helped you most along the way, whether that was workshops, books, podcasts, like what kind of, like, I don't know, even like um, software that has helped your business, kind of like, what do you feel like are the top three resources? Hmm. I definitely think um, one of the very first things is going to be um, the pricing for profit, your, your pricing for profit, because even, um, I think a lot of times, you know, when I, when I talk to other photographers or just other friends that are wanting to do photography, they look at me and they kind of are like, what do you mean you were struggling? Like you had a whole, you had calendar full, booked to full of people. You were doing a shoot every day. And yes, that was true, but I was making no money from it. Like I was working my ass off for no return. And while I loved going in and working with those clients and, you know, doing all that stuff, it just wasn't giving me, I, I wasn't going to be able to sustain that. I couldn't continue to do that. And then after we did your um, little worksheet, it was, didn't take long at all, but it kind of just helped us see like, okay, this is really, like, I, my, I, I look back and I'm like, I do a lot of work. <laughs> like, I don't realize how much, how much of my, 
and it's not something that I don't know I it's I enjoy it but mm-hmm. it's also like I'm like I you know when you add up your studio cost and your mm-hmm. cost of your products and all the little the little get little goodies that you put in there or you know all the work that you do with prepping and planning for their shoot it all adds up and you don't really think about it um and then after we did that worksheet and it was kind of like this is crazy like we <laughs> why are we doing this to ourselves like nobody would ever work like this ever like this is this is crazy and I think that that was the that was one that was definitely hands down but after doing that and seeing how much I should be charging um it was a little terrifying like I was just like huh, okay you really want me to tell people like that's how much I want you to pay me like that's that's crazy like I don't know if I can do that um but then with having, you know, the, with like Google in place and having the website and having that all in place, like, like that was the, that was the thing. I feel like I've done a profit, you know, worksheet type deal before mm-hmm. and got that. But then I'm like, okay, well, how do I, <laughs> what do I do to get those people, you know? And yeah. so I think it was just how everything kind of <laughs> flowed along. So it was like, that was great. But then it was like, you guys had you knew what to do and to help me find those people who mm-hmm. would value my time, who would value my service, would, would, you know, be willing to pay me for the service and the experience that I was going to be able to provide them. Mm-hmm. And so that was definitely the other big, big factor um, in that. And I honestly think the other, if I had to give a third one, it's just going to be, and it's going to sound really gonna sound real cheesy but it would just be my husband like I mean it's not really a software it's not really if without him I would I mean because I am an emotional person (laughs) so I know that there are times where um I definitely think with my heart more than I do with like the actual brain part um and so he's always been you know he's definitely been my rock like it wouldn't I, we wouldn't, I would have quit a long time ago, <laughs> even though, even though I know I would have died inside. I just, yeah. I, to me, I just would have been like, I can't, I just can't do it. I don't know what to do. And so having him there from day one has been, I, I honestly, I, I, we were just looking at like next year we'll have, you know, we'll, February's our anniversary, studio anniversary date. And every time it gets closer to that, towards the end of the year, we look at it and we're just like, I'm like, I would have not been able to do this with anybody else. Like you, me sitting in the corner crying, saying, we can't do this. We just have to quit. And then you being like, no, it's fine. We got this. We got, you know, it's, he definitely um, has made it a lot easier. (laughs) I love that. The support system. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, and I think that, you know, having him, um, having at least one support person there, because he's been through, you know, he's been there from the end, but that's, that's what you guys are too, like, I mean, I know there's been times where, you know, you, when you're first starting out, and you, you do put all of that money, and that time in there, and it does take, you know, sometimes it's immediate, you know, and you start seeing all those leads come in, but then sometimes it's not, you know, immediate or you're still learning the rest of the process you're still learning how to do a consultation you're still learning how to follow up with people and doing all that stuff and still working out those little kinks um too I think that just having you guys there as a sounding board and like okay I did this but I didn't get anywhere so what can I do next you know it's always been really nice it's just like you said it's just having that support system there even if it's just one person you can go to um it definitely means everything and makes a world of difference yeah I love that I feel like because I'm starting these interviews with people that are in photography clients on demand they're all like you guys are all like giving me all the props which I just want everybody watching to know that that's not the point no <laughs> Which um, I know. <laughs> the point is, to, is to find, even if it's not me, um, or you know, our systems and processes that that are in alignment with your business, but in general, support system, finding like-minded people. Because I do know that I talk to a ton of photographers. So I do one-on-one coaching as well. But sometimes one of the things is that they don't have support. They yeah. have people who tell them that they go get a real job. 
you can't make money from photography. Right. Their husbands are like, you've been trying to do this for three years. Like and nothing's going anywhere. And yeah. And that's happening. hard because I, and yeah. I, that, I feel like that's why even if it's just one person, because, yeah. oh, I mean, I have had, I even, I've had clients, you know, like before I moved over to just boudoir, I'll, I will never forget this woman if, as long as I live. Um, because every time I think about her, she, I don't know, I think what she's, Basically, she had said to me that there was, I am in a small town. I am not, I'm in a small town. Um, I'm, you know, I'm in the Bible Belt, all these things. And she just told me that, you know, there was no way that anybody would ever pay what I'm asking for. And there's no way that I could make a boudoir studio, you know, survive, you know, in this small town. Like, this isn't something that anybody here is ever going to want. And I, part of me was like, okay, watch me, <laughs> you know, like, well, just wait and see. And, but you're, you're, there's going to be people out there that tell you, I mean, still to this day, I've got people who are like, I, you know, we've been in the studio for nine years now. And even now they're like, there, there's no way, like you're, you're not going to make it. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, we'll see how that goes. Like, or they're just like, there's just, you, why would you want to do something like that? And I'm like, well, because I like it. You talk about how you hate your job and I actually go to work and have fun all day. So that's why, but that's fine. I'm like, I'm like, it's fine. You know, you do you, it's, you don't have to like what I do. I have people in my corner. And if you're not one of those, then that's fine. You know, you don't, I don't, I don't need you in there anyway. Like it's not a big deal, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I definitely feel like having that support system is, mm -hmm. is everything. Even like you said, even if it's just, you know, another photographer that you can talk to and all that yeah. good stuff. It definitely makes a world of difference. Yeah, there's a lot of groups out there. Yeah. Um, and things where people are thriving. Photographers are thriving and you guys can get support. And if you don't know where to go, make a comment below the video and we'll give you some good suggestions. <laughs> definitely. Um, so due to the timing of this video and this like interview, one of my questions is going to be kind of like time sensitive, if you will, or yeah, time relevant, which is what do you feel like has been the biggest factor in helping you get through COVID? Like how long have you shut down? You know, and it, what has you it know, been like? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so funny because now COVID is not, not trying to make light of the situation at all. Um, I have no personally, no, I mean, I've had family members that have actually had COVID and, you know, have made it through it just fine, all that good stuff, but mm -hmm. not trying to make light of the situation at all. But, you know, it was really funny because I had a calendar full of people when they told me, like, you're not going to work. You're, 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 you're done for like two months. And it was crazy because I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, was nervous. I was like, I, what am I going to do? First of all, I have to call these people and tell them that I can't, I can't, there's not, I can't, you can't come into the studio. I'm not, we're not allowed, you know, and granted, yes, that's, you know, it does make it a little bit easier because you have somebody else telling you, you can't, and everybody knows the situation, but it doesn't make it any easier. Cause then you're kind of like, okay, now I have to move you. And I still had people booked and I'm trying to get everybody in there, but granted, mo all of my clients were super sweet about it and everything like that. And so those two months that we were out, it was crazy because that was two months of sessions and, uh, you know, in-person sales and all this stuff that just didn't happen. Um, but it, and I'm not, I'm not, I know you said earlier, you're like, we're not trying to plug you or anything like that, but, <laughs> but one of the things that, you know, that really helped was I had a lot of free time. So we just continued to do marketing like we, like we normally would. Um, we just made it, you know, obviously I was going to be, I was so ready to get back. They mm. were ready to get out of the house and do something. So we just made it we just continue to serve. We continue to, you know, show them the experience, I, you know, and walking them through the process and everything like that. But one of the big things that really helped us kind of like get through that two month period of not having 
having any really any income. I mean, obviously we had savings, so that helped, which we would have never had before if it wasn't for <laughs> your system. But in that two months, we did a um, just a little uh, a little sale, and any past client that had came in who didn't purchase like my top package, we just did a little sale on digitals, and um, that literally got us through that covered both of the months for our um, bills and stuff. So we didn't even have to dip into the savings account because we just used that and kind of pushed forward. And then once we started back, we had a whole calendar full of people. So it was really, it wasn't, it wasn't really that big of a deal yeah. um, for us. Um, we were able to just continue to move forward and just continue on like ultimately like nothing really had happened um which was really nice because in the past I would have I would have freaked out <laughs> but this round it was just kind of like okay so we're gonna take a little mini vacation for a while and we'll see we'll see what happens but I think that that's the big thing it was just that because we already had that system in place to be before COVID had you know even came into it it was it was almost like it didn't really interrupt anything. It was just like we took a, a vacation and we just kept going. And then because we were kind of like, because we were being stubborn and didn't want to get into savings, uh, we did the little sale and then that just kept us going. So it wasn't really, it was crazy. I think I booked 40 something sessions during COVID. <laughs> I remember you so, saying, oh, yeah. you guys are awesome I know some yeah so people, I think <laughs> I think I know some people took a break and just were like hey I've got all these reschedules I've got my savings mm -hmm. so I can kind of take a vacation but you guys had the savings had the bookings but basically just kept working kept yeah. working <laughs> and are booked out for the rest of the year mm -hmm. yeah yep, it was crazy it was like it was one of those things where we came back and we were like oh my gosh, like, what did we do to ourselves? Like, we're, we're going to be working nonstop. Like, what did we do? But it's been, and it, like, like you said, we've literally booked up, we took COVID and booked up our year. Um, yeah. And so it was, and, and, and did that in a way of not having, we didn't run a sale. We didn't run, you know, we didn't say half off or, you know, we didn't have to do any of that stuff. We just continue to do what we always do. Like, I know your big thing is like, you know, serve them, show them what they're, show them what you're going to do for them. And we just took that. We just did that. Like I, I was more active in my group and, you know, things like that, but it was just like, I had more extra time. So I was able to put a little more attention into, you know, the clients that were going to be coming up um, mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think if anything, it was almost like, it was nice. <laughs> yeah, a little break. Yeah. yeah, it was a little break. So it was, it was, it was, it still baffles us like to be able to say that because I know that it, at any other point in our business that would have killed us. But because we had all the things in place, it was just, I don't know. It was just, like I said, it was almost as, it was, it was, it was just another day. It just, I just happened to be in my home office instead. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And you guys are hitting a new sales goal or new, yes. new high sales this year. Yeah, we are, which is really crazy. Like, I think we're, do, we're going to be a little bit more than we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, but we're two months off, <laughs> two months off. <laughs> yeah. So, which is nice. And then we we're already booking um, into next year and um, which is even, which is nice because I plan on, um, we plan on taking December off just mm -hmm. for, a break and um we'll we're we're pretty we're pretty much set to be to pick up full pace come like january february and march um are pretty pretty much already booked so we're at least we're, you're taking april off please tell me you're taking april off yeah well i'm taking yeah well i'll take off because the baby's due at the end of april okay, end of so april. i'm taking off mid-april may and then um the first half of June, Good. I think the end, the end part of June, I have some, um, clients already booked. They're like my re there are some repeat clients, but, um, but, uh, it'll be fun, but yeah, I'm, I am taking off a little bit next year. <laughs> you deserve it for sure. I know you guys put in 
so much work. I think that sometimes people don't understand like how much work goes into it, but it's oh, also yeah. <laughs> very rewarding, right? Oh, definitely. Um, definitely does. So, okay, to wrap up, what is one piece of advice that you would give to other photographers who are just starting out or they're currently building their photography business? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think that it would be to, you know, just to be honest with yourself. I think I went into, or both of us, my husband and I went into opening up a photography studio and not necessarily being like, oh my God, we're going to be making millions and doing this. But we never wanted to say like, I'm not good at that. Like I, I, that's just not that's not my strong point. And mm -hmm. I am a perfectionist and I don't like admitting that I'm not good at something. I will, I would rather, yeah, I would rather work myself mm -hmm. to like no end trying to do better at that mm -hmm. when there's just, there's just some things that I can't do. Like I'm just, my personality, my skill set. it's just not in line with me. And I don't care how much I try. It's just not, it's not going to work. And so I think that once I was able to be like, okay, you're right. I'm not good at this. Or also being able to take some criticism. Like I said, I'm a perfectionist. And if somebody comes to me and tells me that, it's not good or it's not right or there's a better way to do that it's not that they're trying to tell me that I suck <laughs> they're just saying you're doing this the really you're doing you're going about this like really in a way that's like a lot more difficult than it has to be mm -hmm. and you can just make these small little adjustments that make the world a difference and I think that's been the biggest thing for me is just being able to say okay this isn't working <laughs> I'm trying um, somebody else has to know something like I, I'm not, I've tried everything I can think of. So let me, let me reach out to somebody else who, you know, is saying that they're doing really well at this. And it doesn't even matter what it is, whether it's your consultations, how you book people, you know, or, or just your photography skill in general. Like it's not, I mean, granted, there are some people out there that just want to be mean but for the most part like people genuinely want to help you you know so don't take it the wrong way like just listen and then try it and then you know keep going like it's not it's okay not to be great at everything like it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna make you a you know anybody worse than what you are it's just that you're not, that's not your forte and that, which is fine because that same person that's helping you, you'll be surprised at something that they're not necessarily great at, but then that you're like, you nail it like every single time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is just like, it's okay <laughs> to reach out and ask for help. And it's okay not to, you know, feel like you have everything down. You don't have to be perfect at everything. Like yep. I'm not perfect at anything. <laughs> and so I think that that would be the biggest thing is just, you know, know your limits and don't be afraid to reach out to somebody who, who you feel or, you know, that can help. Like it's not, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Like I promise you it's going to be you're going to feel 10 times better if you just reach out to somebody and say, okay, I'm doing a consultation and it's not working. Every time I do this, they're not booking. I don't know what I'm doing wrong versus to continue on that path. Because if you just continue on that path, you're just, what is that saying? Like you're, about insanity, you know, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And it's, and eventually you'll get tired of it and you will reach out. But if you would have just reached out in the first place, you would have been over that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a lot faster. So I definitely think that's the biggest thing for me. I love that. That's great advice for <laughs> sure. And I'm definitely fall in that category of being a perfectionist and, <laughs> and have learned that lesson myself. And what's interesting about what you say about someone else's strengths, like you may have a strength that someone else doesn't have, and then they have a strength that matches your weakness. Yes. And what's interesting is, is, okay, so yeah, we could probably do something, even though it's our weakness, we could learn it. We could try it. We could try to do it. A, if it's not something we enjoy doing, we're going to procrastinate. Yes. But when you bring in somebody 
who that's the thing that lights them up and that's their forte and their strength, they get it done like 20 times faster. Yep. <laughs> like it's like me with Photoshop. Like I can retouch. I can put together and create things in Photoshop, but it takes me 10 times as long as it does someone else who's really proficient at it. And that's like, that's their thing that they know right. really well. And so I've learned that myself where I'm like, oh no, I don't want to pay to have this, this certificate designed. I can do that. Like I can totally do that. And I'm like six hours later and I'm like, yeah, I probably could have sent that off paid $45 and had somebody have it back in like an hour. <laughs> right. And then you could have been moved on to doing something that you actually enjoy doing and that you are exactly. good at. Like, yeah, it's not even saying that you, or even, even just that, you know, even though you can do it, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you should. should. Like, it's just one of those things. Like, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's like, oh no. Like, or like, I think that goes with like a lot of social media, you know, mm -hmm. just because, there's Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and, you know, all these things, just because they're out there doesn't mean you necessarily have to be on all of them. Like there's just, it doesn't, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like you, just because it's there and just because you can, like, it doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So basically being open to advice, seeking okay. out advice and being open to criticism. And I loved what you said about, Criticism doesn't mean that you suck. Right. <laughs> it just means that they're that somebody's offering a alternative that might actually be more simple or an easier way to go about what it is that you're trying to achieve. And that the way that you're doing it might not be as efficient or as easy as it could be. And I right. love that. That's like something I'm like really resonated with me because I'm also a perfectionist who sometimes when people criticize me, I'm I'm like, my walls go up, yeah, you know, because I'm just like, <laughs> don't tell me I didn't do it good enough. Right. Um, no, and I'm the same way. And I feel like, and don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, if somebody's going to tell me something, I, I still initially, those walls yeah. want to go up and I'm like, okay, no. All right. First of all, you asked for the help. So you can't sit there and be like, somebody give me, you know, help me, give me criticism on how this photo looks and then be like, well, that can't be right. Be like, well, you, you asked for it. So, <laughs> but yeah. I think that's just, I think that's the biggest thing is just like, you know, just know that that's not what like people aren't trying to tear you down like yeah. I mean like especially especially if you have those people who are you're reaching out to that is your support system like they're yeah. not there to tell you you suck or that you should quit like yeah. no they want they want to help you succeed they want to see you continue to grow and move forward and the things that they're telling you isn't for you to be like oh, well I might as well just give up like no they're saying you can do this Mm -hmm. but let's, you should maybe try this, you know, see, and they're not even saying you have to, they're just saying, here's a different way. <laughs> Love that. It's here if you want to try it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for hopping on today. I know you no have problem. a busy schedule, so I really, really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Right. Bye. Bye.